could be argued that men turning towards uh, forcing women to stay at home and uh, and, and be subjugated in, 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 in domestic life is also fairly dangerous, perhaps more dangerous than video games. Well, this is the thing that obviously you've been feminized by the feminism that is in the uh, water that you drink and the air that you breathe, my friend. But <laughs> this is the, the problem with feminism. A new shocking report calls violence against women and girls a national emergency. That's as 3,000 offences are recorded every single day. Well, police chiefs warn that young men are being radicalised online into extreme misogyny by influencers like Andrew Tate, in the same way that terrorists draw in followers. So are influencers like Andrew Tate radicalising young boys online, and could they even be to blame for rising violence against women? Well, the writer and broadcaster Emma Webb says influencers like Andrew Tate are promoting misogyny, while the podcaster Jake Julius says boys need more masculine role models. Uh, well, OK, Jake, let's have you put your case first. Well, I think that the real problem you're looking at here, particularly with the UK, is that you have a feminised liberal culture that has imported a much more masculine culture with mass immigration of Islamic people, and these people have very pronounced ideas about gender roles, and these people don't believe that Timmy can become Tammy if he decides to, if his blue hair Marxist teacher tells him he can. So you guys have a lot bigger problems to worry about than Andrew Tate, so it's laughable. And look, I don't know why they love to blame everything at this point on, oh, there's just a bunch of little boys who are following and listening to Andrew Tate. A, a lot of this stuff has been going on way before KSR Andrew Tate. You know, it's like the men started going their own way decades ago. And with everything that's going on in the world right now, the last thing these people need to be worried about is male online influencers. OK, well, Emma, Andrew Tate, lots of people have mentioned. I think even teachers are now warning against Andrew Tate in the classroom. How much influence do you think he has? And is he promoting misogyny in a way that could potentially encourage men and young boys to be violent against women? Well, he is very popular, um, but actually I do agree with Jake. I think that we do have much bigger problems than Andrew Tate when it comes to um, people's attitudes towards women. The problem with Andrew Tate is that he is very popular, but he's also, um, I do think, a very good role model for men. Um, I don't think he's a more traditional male uh, vote in any way. Um, and I, I don't, it, you know, in many ways, that he... Um, is, is promoting the opposite of the kind of manners that we want young boys to have towards women. Emma, I think your line, is, your line is a bit inaudible, um, so we'll try and fix that. Mm. Um, and shall we turn back to uh, Jake? Because uh, the problem yeah, is... Get... Andrew Tate... Yeah, I've I seen got a... some of it. Jake, I've seen a lot of... Um, you know, clips of Andrew Tate, and I've watched some interviews with him. And he seems to almost be radicalising himself. He seems to have gone from sort of promoting, you know, men need to stand up for themselves and be strong partners to women, to actually women are property and women are of lesser value. Uh, do you think that's fair to say that he's got more extreme in his position? No, I don't. I think, it, first of all, you have to understand that a lot of what he does is on Twitter, it's comedy. So you have to take it with, with a pinch of salt. And if you actually listen to his interviews in more detail, you'll find that his views are actually much more nuanced than that. So maybe go and research it. But some of the things that Andrew Jake, Tate does not promote... I've actually listened to promote, him at length. I've actually listened to him at length. Oh, well, you've, you've straw manned his position, so maybe listen again. But some of the positions that he doesn't promote are like, things like crime, pornography, transgenderism, video games, male feminism, drinking, taking drugs, and also new age spiritualism. Some things that men are actually turning towards that are actually destructive. Well, it could be argued that men turning towards uh, forcing women to stay at home and, uh, and, and be subjugated in, 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 in domestic life is also fairly dangerous, perhaps more dangerous than video games. Well, this is the thing that obviously you've been feminized by the feminism that is in the uh, water that you drink and the air that you breathe, my friend. But <laughs> this is the, the problem with feminism, that they, they think that women are being subjugated when actually a lot of women would love to stay home. A lot of women would love to be stay-at-home mothers. And actually, it's one of the most difficult jobs that you can possibly do is raise people. So if you raise three or four people and you're a mother, then you've done an amazing thing. But unfortunately, with messaging like this, 
the feminist messaging will actually denigrate motherhood. A lot of women won't feel subjugated. I'll tell you that much. And that was an easy call out. Anytime we hear men talking like women, we know he grew up under his mom, sisters, or female friends' influence. And obviously I'm not trying to disrespect men who grew up listening to their mother being mama boys. Men who are mama boys actually turn out to be good men in society. So we are just saying that men need to be weary of taking advice regarding politics, relationships, and marriage from their mom and female friends or family. I find it hard to sort of understand how I've been feminized if I think that women have a role in the workplace. I don't, I don't quite see how that is more feminine. Um, but should we turn back to Emma Webb? Let's hope that your uh, audio is working. What do you make of this entire dichotomy? Um, look, I, just to repeat what I said in case um, people couldn't hear me, I don't, I don't think that Andrew Tate is the problem when it comes to violence against women. Um, I think that he's not a good role model for um, for young men. I think that men lack good role models. Uh, many men, increasingly young boys, are living in um, households where they don't consistently have a father present. Um, and I actually think that Jake is right about mass migration. Lou, do you think that people leave their misogynistic culture at the border when they migrate to a new country? No, of course they don't. And there was one example recently of somebody who raped a child in Germany and was somehow in the UK for five months before being arrested. So we have all sorts of problems um, beside Andrew Tate, but that doesn't mean that it isn't, he isn't a malign influence in, in the sense that he isn't a good role model. And I think actually the way that the term misogyny is used can also be a problem because very often people are accused of sexism um, if they open a door for a woman or pull out a chair for a woman. But actually, I think restoring some of those traditional manners between men and women would actually deal with part of the problem because many of the, the, the ways that you know people now behave towards um, women, particularly influenced by poor pornography culture. I mean, more than half of, ch of um, sexual offences committed against child, accord child children, again, according to the NPCC, are committed by other children. So you have all of these other problems. And the real elephant in the room, of course, is the fact that we, ha we effectively um, have no control over our border. We do not know who is coming in. And of course, that's going to put women and children at risk. Um, so yes, I do think that um, Andrew Tate is not a good role model. Um, but I think that we have a much, much bigger problem on our hands. Okay, and, and Jake, just to challenge you on, on these on, online influencers like Andrew Tate, I find that a lot of them are very outspoken about how people should be living their lives. So marriage and having children and looking after your family and working hard. But then you look at them and they're not really living their lives in that way. They're usually unmarried. They usually got lots of girlfriends. They're usually just flashing superficial things like a new car and, and whatever else. Not necessarily living by the standards that they set for other men. Yeah, no, I think that that's a very fair assessment. Um, you'd have to tell me specific examples. If you're talking about Andrew Tate, I'm sure you're aware that he's converted to Islam, so he believes in the whole having five wives thing. I don't believe in that. But I think the more important issue here um, that our other guest, I'm so sorry, I forgot your name, but uh, just Emma. raised <laughs> is the fact that you, Emma, sorry, is that you guys have like a lot of mass migration happening, which is a big problem. And this is something that's not new, guys. Tommy Robinson was talking about this over a decade ago when he was saying that there are grooming gangs grooming young women in English towns and the media and the police wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah, and there have been a number of inquiries into that now, and thankfully the problem is being uh, addressed and much more uh, spoken about in the mainstream, not least by our own Charlie Peters, who made a fantastic documentary on the grooming gang scandal aired here on GB News. Uh, I'm afraid we've run to the end of that conversation, but Jake Julius and Emma Webb, thank you so much for your contributions. Really interesting stuff. Thank you very much, Thank indeed. You for me. I think it's, you know, you can easily disapprove of people like Andrew Tate, and there's a lot to disapprove about, believe me. I mean, just watch some of his stuff. You don't you have to be a rampant feminist uh, not, to, <laughs> not to, to like this man. He really does come out with some awful, awful stuff, in my opinion. But I think it's a stretch to say that, therefore, men are committing more violent crimes against women as a result. And Wait, did you guys just catch that? Both of the guests on this panel disagree that it's Andrew Tate's fault. And then the host continued to blame Andrew Tate, pushing the agenda that it is his fault. Look, I think there really is some truth that there is a mainstream media agenda against this man. They do not like the fact that more kids are watching this guy online than watching their news channel. And actually, from what I hear about Andrew Tate, he actually gives young guys some good 
positive advice and he kind of encouraged guys to have discipline to not watch corn to not give their money to women on ol i'm not mad at him for encouraging men to not be simps and i don't know who misinformed this young anchor simp because he's obviously not up on what's going on with feminism in women right now a lot of women have realized they actually don't want to be in the workplace and the truth be told all of these women who do get out there and chase these careers and want to do all this they realize deep down inside, they would rather be home. They don't want to work. I want to do this guy know that a lot of these women who get out there and chase their careers, a decade later, after chasing their careers and hitting whatever gold mark they want, these women want to be home. They don't want to work. They want to have kids and be traditional women all of a sudden. I feel like nobody's paying attention to the fact that there's currently a war on traditional family values in America and a war on men. The left liberal women are like, let's snuff men out. Let's feminize men. Let's tell men they're not men. We can be men and we don't need you. And traditional family values. Oh, here's a war against that. What is a family? A family can be whatever you want it to be. We again, it's back to we don't need men. That's why when you look at the culture on the left, you have more violence you have more crime, you don't have men in the homes, like every, you have lower rates of marriage. Those values are not important to them and they are literally purposely seeping them and infusing them into America, into the American value system. All you gotta do is turn the TV on and you can see it. Trust me, it's a war on men and a war on family. By the way, this isn't a new war. This war started in the 70s. You guys drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about what this man had to say to this feminist panel. And be sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.